Hey there, this is Coach Chris Wilson here in the Critical Bench Compound over by the Dumbbell Rack because today I'm going to be covering a lot of ways to train your forearms, uh, your fore really the lower part of your arm. Uh, oftentimes a really neglected part of your training or of your arm training specifically because we focus so much on biceps and triceps. So today I'm going to help you. I'm going to give you some tools today. You don't have to do all these exercises, but I do encourage you to try them all at some point and start to implement them into your training. So uh, let's get right to it. All right, so let's start with a few of the basics when you think of forearms in your training and dumbbells. A lot of us will think of uh, hammer curls and reverse curls. And I encourage both of those exercises. I do them both uh, many different ways. Uh, a lot of times you see people not doing uh, reverse curls with dumbbells. You'll see them do it with a bar quite often, certainly an easy bar, a cambered bar, but not so much dumbbells. So we'll start with that. So I'll just grab some 20s here. Now the key to a good reverse curl is to make sure that when you're when you're starting the exercise, obviously the palms are facing the body. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to stay pronated. So palm down, you're trying to stay palm down through the whole exercise. Inevitably, what's gonna happen, we're all a little bit built differently, uh, that the, the palm is gonna wanna start to kind of open up uh, as you come through the curl. But so what you're trying to do is maintain this palm down grip and there might be a slight angle to it as you see, but as I come up, see my palm is still mostly down, a little bit of an angle, kind of like the angle of, a, of a, an easy bar. And then back down, okay? So we're here, full stretch. And then like, I feel this more on my right side, uh, a little bit of tightness. So, you know, probably a little bit of inf inflammation there that typically will go away as I train and warm up the muscles, but that's your standard reverse curl. I do encourage doing them with dumbbells sometimes versus always doing a reverse curl with a bar of some sort. So try and break it up. Now, a slight difference from that would be the hammer curl, which is one of my favorite types of curls. So that's just a neutral grip. So your hands just, or your arms, neutral at your side, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're just keeping that, that grip all the way through the curl, right to the anterior part of the shoulder, the front of the shoulder, and then down under control. And what you'll notice is with all these curls is I'm really trying to control the descent of the curl. You're always gonna be a little faster, a little bit more explosive on the, um, the you know, the concentric, motion so the upward motion and then under control on the way down don't let it swing don't let it do the work for you you control it where you're stronger you should work harder eccentrically work harder work harder work harder all the way down those are both terrific uh kind of more typical dumbbell exercises now this is one that i actually didn't even have on my list so I'm adding it in because it actually, uh, over the years, and I've made past videos about this curl actually, um, it's kind of like a combination of a standard curl, palm up curl, with a reverse curl. It's called a Zotman curl, Z-O-T-T-M-A-N. It's a great way to do a curl. So you start at like a standard, like you're gonna do a standard supinated palm up type curl. But what you do at the top is you pause and then rotate through the forearm and go down as a reverse curl. So palm up here, so then where you would normally kind of briefly pause and go right back down, you actually rotate the weights back into reverse curl motion and then down under control. Zotman curl, so palm up, squeeze, rotate, down under control nice and slowly. Again, palm up, nice squeeze, rotate, down under control. The old Zotman curl, terrific curl. You do those, go with lighter weight. Uh, they will burn, go for, you know, six to eight reps, even eight to 10 reps. Um, but 
focus on your form, on doing it right, on going slow, on the uh, eccentric motion of the exercise, okay? All right, now we're gonna get down on the bench and show you some more like wrist specific stuff. All right, now I'm using my friend, the bench, to support my lower arm, my forearm. And we're gonna go through, you know, kind of the two um, more typical forearm exercises, specifically isolating the forearms, not really involving the biceps, uh, would be the wrist curl and the reverse wrist curl, right? So I like doing these, you could do these, uh, if you're going with lighter weight, more rep, high, high rep work, you know, I would do them both at the same time. If you're really, I mean, if you're like a uh, pro level uh, arm wrestling guy, actually I, who I used to know uh, one, and I used to watch him train his forearms and he would do this exercise with like an 80 to 100 pound dumbbell. It was insane how strong he was, uh, but he was a, a pro, top pro level arm wrestler. So if you're going super heavy, I would go one at a time to really focus on the, the movement for the one arm. But otherwise, if you're more of a normal human being, uh, you can go lighter loads. I really like to let the, the dumbbell roll down into my fingertips to extend the, the rep and then come up as, as high, obviously, as I can and really try to get a nice contraction at the top. Again, let it roll into the fingers squeeze at the top. Now, tens is, you know, fairly light. I'm not working all that hard here. However, if you're merging these types of exercises with more of a, of a typical, you know, bicep day or arm training day, or you're hitting, you know, your big muscles like your back, your chest, stuff like that, um, you're probably not going to have, these muscles are going to be pretty well worked and fatigued. So, I mean, just doing this with light weight for more reps, I feel it. I can tell I'm doing something here, but they feel really good. And just nice and slow and controlled. Squeeze down, really let it drop. I really let, like to let it get into the fingertips and then really get it all the way up. Now, the reverse of that, obviously, so, you know, one way obviously is, is the, the palm up is, is a flexion exercise. The palm down is a, an extension exercise where a lot of us, um, you know, are, are a little bit imbalanced we're, or unbalanced, however you want to say it, uh, where we, we devote so much time to the front side of our body. We do a lot of pushing. Uh, usually we need to offset that by doing more pulling work or more extension or posterior work, right? So the more you can do this, the better your chances of probably bringing balance back to the arms and uh, stopping, you know, pain and inflammation before it starts. Because again, a lot of that stuff just happens because we have a natural tendency to stick with the things that we like that we can see and we don't do as much of the other things. So this, so now I'm palm down. Okay, so again, this can feel a little bit more challenging. Uh, a lot of people will do this just with a barbell, but I really like this with dumbbells. And I like, again, it's the same process of just kind of try to hold the dumbbell relatively loose in the hand and really focus on the forearms and the, those wrists. Again, that the palms kind of, if you need to reset, the palms really want to open up. So you gotta really work hard at trying to keep the palms down. Keep that range of motion as good as it can be. I mean, these feel great, and these don't take a lot of weight. I don't think I ever really even go much over maybe 15 pounds with this exercise because Feels really good. You get a nice burn in the lower arm there. Mm. Love that exercise. So your standard dumbbell wrist curl and your reverse wrist curl. Now we're gonna uh, transition into a different way of using these. Okay, so for this one, I'm just gonna show you uh, one arm at a time so I can focus myself on doing it right. <clears throat> Some people, what you'll find is they'll, they'll there are better tools to use, strength 
tools to use for this exercise, but you, it's still effective with a dumbbell if you're doing it right. So supination and pronation with your arm supported, okay? So supination and pronation. Pronation is the act of turning the palm down. Supination is the act of opening the, the palm up. Okay, so we supinate, the biceps are a supinator. The biceps supinate the, the lower arm and turn the pinky outward as you come up through a curl. And that's what really engages the bicep nicely. But you can just do supination and pronation work with just the, the lower arm focusing on the muscles of the forearm, right? So if we're here, if this can get a little bit confusing for people because it kind of looks like the same exercise, but it's really not. So if I start with my palm up and my pink, kind of my pinky up and my thumb kind of down and I turn this way, okay, what am I doing? Well, I'm pronating. But if I start this way with my, on, with my forearm here and my palm down, so my thumb is kind of down and my pinky is, is kind of up like this and I'm opening up, now what I'm doing is I'm supinating, okay? So what the, the key here is to set yourself up with some resistance. So if you hold the dumbbell from, the, from kind of the one end, like this, okay? And then I'm just rotating this way. So it's, a, it's heavier, obviously the, the, the weight is heavier on this distal end, this far further end here. And again, I'm, it's not under incredible load. I'm just trying to work the, the muscles of the forearm as many ways as, as they're designed to work under some tension, under some resistance. And this actually feels quite good. It feels like almost therapeutic because you can't really get this from a lot of regular exercises. Now, that is, let me do some on my other side so I don't feel all, all weird. So, and again, you see what's happening. I'm really letting it dip down Letting, letting gravity really pull that dumbbell down towards the ground, and then I'm resisting it up. I'm pronating my hand under resistance. And this might take a little bit more load. Like you might want to go right to a 12 or a 15 for this exercise. But again, this is just something that feels good to add into the mix. I'm not looking to break records with this exercise. I'm just looking to have a more complete lower arm workout. Now, the opposing exercise for this is if I start with my palm more downward, right? And then I rotate up. So now I'm supinating under resistance. So again, I'm trying to hold the dumbbell as close to that end as I can opening up and again this isn't like super hard or anything but if it does feel good and I'm telling you if you play certain types of sports especially like a tennis guy where you're gri you're, you're having a grip so sometimes it's like kind of getting the <laughs> getting into into position I'm trying to leverage my hand as far to the to the one side as I possibly can see and so from one hand to the other like I don't feel the, this feels a little bit better I have more range of motion in my right so I felt more natural here I'm trying to open up but this felt but you can see, I mean, there's muscles at work here, and it's a small range of motion. It's not some incredible amount of motion here. So all I'm doing is I'm doing this, or I'm doing this. And I'm just slightly modifying and changing the position of my lower arm on the bench and the, posi and the starting position of my hand. And that's getting, getting me to have the, you know, some amount of resistance uh, you know, fighting against that that motion of the of the wrist. So it's just it's it's just it's just motion under resistance. Okay. So small movements. You don't have to do a lot of these. A couple of sets. 
10 to 15 reps probably gets the job done with a somewhat light load. And uh, again, it's, it feels really good. It feels, it feels good on the wrists. It feels good on the forearms. I like it. All right, let's move on. Okay, here we go. This one a little off the radar probably for most of you. This is ulnar deviation and radial deviation. So this is this, this, is this motion of the, of the wrist, of the forearm. So like me bringing my thumb towards my elbow or my pinky towards my elbow. It's this, it's like a lateral motion of the wrist, right? So we've done the extension, we've done the flexion, we've done the supination, uh, sorry, the, the supination and the pronation. Now we're doing this lateral motion or this ulnar radial uh, deviation. So how do we do that under resistance? Well, easy for this one. This is a uh, radial deviation, right? So this is just bringing the kind of the thumbs towards the elbow, if you will, under resistance. This does not take much weight. Tens would be probably fine for most people. Okay, so I'm just kind of sideways. If you want to see me again, I'm kind of sideways. I'm not palm down. I'm not palm up, I'm sideways. I put the dumbbell in my hand like I'm gonna shake someone's hand, okay? I let gravity work against me and then I'm just coming up. Okay, now you might be saying, well, Chris, how do we, how do, we do it the other way? Under resistance. And I say, okay, that's why I'm getting creative with you, but you can do this with a bench and a couple dumbbells if you do it the right way. So you just lay down, you grab your dumbbells, okay? So now my hands, my wrists are in the same position and now I go this way. So notice, again, my hands are still, I'm in a neutral position, just like I was the other way. And I'm just, my resistance is this way. I'm just grabbing here, boom. Okay, now, like I said, there are a lot of different ways to train these exercises with different devices, I'm focusing in on how to do it effectively with dumbbells, okay? So obviously I started with kind of the, the bigger movements of the arm, the ones that are a little bit more forearm and bicep with the, your reverse curl and your Zotman curl and your hammer curl. And those are the ones that probably are gonna get the most attention. But these other moves are smaller, more isolated, and you're probably gonna have to decrease the, the weight you're using, but super effective, and it's really just hitting the, the wrists and the forearms in all the different ways they can be hit. Now, we're gonna go over to the turf for the big finish. Okay, so I've moved from the dumbbell area over to the turf because a farmer's carry is kind of a must-do forearm grip uh, exercise. Terrific, um, grab the bigger, the bigger, heavier dumbbells. Uh, these are great to do, obviously, this exercise with anything in the gym, kettlebells, farmer's bars, uh, I mean, get, you can get creative, sandbags, the list goes on and on, but I love doing it with just a standard dumbbell, and if you don't have a turf area or like a long, you know, a, a lengthy walkway to do this, then just pick some kind of route and walk around in circles. I've seen people walking around the gym just holding dumbbells. So the key here to a good farmer's carry is, is good posture and trying to hold the dumbbells out from the hips. Don't, don't do the lazy carry. Talked about this in past videos. Boom, you want, you want to really fire your back muscles and your shoulders and have that good posture, right? Heads up, looking out at the horizon, okay? Shoulders are really packed in feeling everything and then the the great side effect of a farmer's carry why why this exercise is in this video is because of the grip work so you're having this nice long period of time 
holding weight in your hand. And this translate, uh, translates very well to other exercises like a deadlift, a shrug, a bent over row, uh, any kind of exercise that you do with time under tension where you're gripping for extended periods of time. Pull-ups, right? Love this because you get such a great burn going in the arms, the lower arms. Anything that makes your grip strength stronger is a good exercise like this. Woo, they're smoking. All right, there you have it. 10 exercises for all of you out there looking for great dumbbell options to strengthen your forearms, your wrists, to restore balance, and uh, just have really good um, movement uh, available to you in your lower arm. So many of us, you know, if we're keyboard uh, freaks like me, spend a lot of time on the computer, or if you're an athlete who spends a lot of time, you know, gripping uh, a certain way, really anything that you do repetitively over the long term can really bring uh, imbalance into your, your arms, into all parts of your body. But these exercises, if done, uh, you know, routinely, can really help to bring balance back to the arms and help to alleviate pain uh, over the over the long term. Again, if you're doing the, these consistently and not too aggressively, be smart with the weights that you select for these exercises. Now, regarding dumbbells, we have a whole series of great dumbbells for guys over 50. Uh, tremendous workouts with John Hansen who's a, a, a three-time natural uh, Mr. Olympia. He's, a, he, he's just been, he's like a bodybuilding historian. He's been around the sport for a very, very long time. And we had John come in to film a whole series of great dumbbell workouts for the entire body. We know you'll love it because we've gotten so much great response from, from these, uh, this series of workout videos with dumbbells. So to check it out, go to the pinned comment below this video to see what these uh, workouts are with John, uh, or certainly you can uh, look in the description area or above me in the cards or, or wait till the very end of this video. It's in the end screen as well. So it's a little bit of everywhere. You will find the dumbbell workouts for guys over 50. You won't be let down, I promise you. Thanks so much. Be sure to give me a great big thumbs up for all these great forum exercises. Subscribe to the Critical Bench YouTube channel for more content just like this. And uh, don't forget, leave us questions or comments. We read those and we will get back to you. Thanks and we'll see you soon.